Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Nice to see you, brothers and sisters, wherever you are watching us across the nation of the world uh, and in this nation as well. It's always a joy uh, to uh, join us as we uh, engage with God and encounter God in a new way. I pray and hope that you had a fantastic Easter weekend and you experienced God in a new way and you're growing from one level to the other. And because of that, you are living as people that believe in the resurrection power of God and you're walking in the authority of God and you are experiencing new things and you're obedient in telling others about Jesus. I don't know what you're expecting in this service, but I'm expecting God to move. God is going to do new things in this service. He's going to minister unto us in this service. And I'm not coming in this service with preconceived ideas of how God moved last week. God is going to do a new thing uh, this in this service. And I'm expecting God to exceed my expectations. It's my prayer that you also, as you sit in your home and wherever you are, that you're coming in this service with full of expectation that God wants to meet you again. He wants to minister unto you today. And as you engage with brothers and sisters across the nations of the world in this 45 to an hour, we pray that the Lord is going to do a new thing in your life, that you're not going to be the same at the end of this service. You'll be giving a testimony that the Lord himself has spoken unto you through his word, through the singing, through the praying. Now, I don't know where you're sitting, wherever you are, can I ask you to take away anything that is going to be a distraction to you? We're dedicating this time to God. He's a holy God, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the almighty God. We are in the presence of God. And I would like you to just take anything that distracts you. If it's a phone that is distracting you, just pull it out or maybe put it on mute or put it on silence. If you're watching this from the phone, uh, you know, just make sure that other notifications are silenced so that we can focus on the name of the Lord. Well, let us pray together as we get ready. Father God, we bless your name. We give you glory. We thank you for what you did on Easter weekend. Thank you on how you ministered unto us in this nation, in this church, and across this nation and the nations of the world. We bless your name. We give you glory. Now, Lord, give us fresh oil for this day. Give us fresh oil for this service. Minister unto us. Make our minds and hearts ready to receive that which you have for us today. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Just as this service was being prepared, we received the news that Prince Philip had died. So I'd just love us to take a moment now just to pray God's blessing upon his family and to give thanks for his life. So Father, we thank you for the life of Prince Philip. Lord, we thank you for his love of our country for his devotion to duty. We thank you for his love for his family. And we pray now for the Queen and for the whole royal family as they mourn his loss. Father, we ask that you would draw near to them and comfort them with your love. And we pray for all who mourn at this time. We ask you, Lord, that they would know your everlasting arms beneath them that they would know you as the one who is close to the brokenhearted. So, Father, we entrust Prince Philip now to your love and mercy through our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. Amen.
He's our rescuer. He's our rescuer. He our Taking a trip. We've been. Yes, we're walking. And uh, <laughs> you were taking the road out of Jerusalem. <laughs> I see. <laughs> and someone told you to put it back. Really? <laughs> but you didn't trust him. Why not? <laughs> he was a psychopath. <laughs> ah. I was outside my chippy. Yes, and I found a fork in the road. <laughs> is it true the biggest cause of road rage is crossroads? <laughs> you notice the houses were 64k, 128k, 256k, 512k. That's odd. It was memory lane. Oh dear. There used to be a paper shop near here. Okay. But it blew away. Oh dear. That's terrible. Uh, 
there's another route from here and it goes by the pub does it take long the difference is staggering <laughs> uh, yeah you're always learning things on a journey and uh, uh, we're coming to a rocky place you might pick something up a little boulder yeah it's great to have confidence confidence is everything it could be hilly your map was smooth I'm sorry, there can still be a hill in real life. Yes. Um, no, you'll get over it. Do you like the jacket? Yes, it's specially for journeys. Yes, it's a trailblazer. Why, thank you. I think I look quite slim in it. This losing weight is no walk in the park, you know. OK. Um, our story is... Uh, uh, about learning something. Yeah, it was so important it made the disciples a lot bolder. Mm. It's enough to make you run all the way back to Jerusalem. Yeah. By the way, did you put that road back? Good morning. Let us pray together. Oh Lord, you are our hope. We trust and we praise you. We declare your glory. We thank you for all the wonderful things you have done and the many gifts you have given us. You are our rock. And now, Lord, we bring to you our world. Where there is brokenness, bring wholeness. Where there is friction, bring peace. Please protect all Christian ministries. Give wisdom and insight to your people. This morning we lift to you Sue and Simon doing your work in Uganda and ask your blessing and protection on them and their family. Amen. Lord, we pray for our government and leaders that they will be guided by you as they lead us forward into a time of freedom after the restrictions of the pandemic. We give you grateful thanks for those whose selfless service enabled us to see a way forward, for scientists developing the vaccines, medical staff and all frontline workers. Amen. We ask for your Holy Spirit to rest on our clergy and church leaders and their families. Let them feel your loving arms around them. We thank you for the technology which has enabled us to share online services and Zoom meetings and praise you that some were able to meet together at the open air services last Sunday. We pray we will never take for granted the privilege of meeting our brothers and sisters in Christ to worship you. Amen. We bring to you all those who are suffering who are unwell, lonely and grieving, and pray for your loving, healing touch on them. In Philippians, we are told, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God your needs and don't forget to thank him for his answers. If you do this, you will experience the peace which is far more wonderful than humankind can understand. Therefore, Lord, fully trusting in you, we ask these prayers in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Now will you join me in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Today's reading is from the book of Luke, chapter 24, verses 13 to 35. 
Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. They were kept from recognising him. He asked them, What are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them named Cleopas asked him, Are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened here in these days? What things? he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but they didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels, who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. He said to them, How foolish you are, and slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going to go farther. But they urged him strongly, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognised him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them, assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognised by them when he broke the bread. I was looking at my kids' copy of The Week Junior earlier this week and there was a word for the week which was respair. It's not a word that I had ever come across before but it is a word that would have been familiar to people living in the 16th century in Britain. I get the feeling though that it should be in my regular vocabulary as a Christian. We're all familiar with the word despair and perhaps increasingly so during the last year as we've battled with COVID and many people have struggled to find a sense of hope as we've gone through lockdowns and loss in many different forms. But despair means the opposite of despair. It means fresh hope or recovery from despair, to discover hope again. And resurrection is the very definition of that. Resurrection means that there is no hopeless situation. Resurrection resurrection means that there is no situation beyond the reach of God. He has defeated our greatest enemies, our greatest fears. Where there had been despair, hope is renewed. We're starting a series called Resurrection Life, which is about how the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead affects everything. How our lives as Christians are radically different because of the fact of the resurrection. How the resurrection speaks with vital relevance into our COVID world. We're going to be looking at different angles and taking various passages from the New Testament, but starting with some of the characters who saw the resurrected Jesus with their own eyes and how things changed for them. The resurrection of Jesus was witnessed by many people in different contexts. Peter Williams gives this list. Jesus was seen in Judea, in Galilee, in town, in countryside, indoors, outdoors, in the morning and the evening, by prior appointment and without appointment, close and distant, on a hill, by a lake, to groups of men and groups of women, to individuals and groups of up to 500, sitting, standing, walking, eating and talking. Today we're looking at one of those uh, resurrection appearances of Jesus and it's the story of Jesus appearing to the two friends travelling the road to Emmaus. It was so wonderful, wasn't it, for those of us who were able to gather for the first time in ages last Sunday to celebrate the risen Jesus. 
But I don't know about you, sometimes I'm having a bit of difficulty recognising people at the moment. There are some funky long hairstyles. And then with the added difficulty of masks, I'm sometimes, you know, I'm really struggling to work out someone's identity. And it can be somebody that I really know very well. So if I walk past you in Tesco's, please don't take offence. Sometimes we have to look more closely for a few minutes before we realise who is standing right in front of us. When the resurrected Jesus appeared to his followers, it often took them a moment or two to realise that it was him. We saw that with Mary last week who mistook Jesus for the gardener. And we see it here with the two friends on the Emmaus Road. This is one of those Bible accounts where I just think, gosh, wouldn't it have been so amazing to actually be there? We read, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognising him. I want to camp out here for a moment because so often in our lives, as we walk along the road, we can assume that Jesus isn't there. Our circumstances will sometimes keep us from recognising Jesus. When we're in pain, sometimes we don't see Jesus. We don't experience his presence. When our faces are downcast, we're not looking up. But he is there, walking with you. He promised it. Lift your eyes to look into his face. If it doesn't feel like he's there, rest on the many promises in his word that he will walk with you through suffering. Often with hindsight, we know that he was with us, don't we? And perhaps we say, weren't our hearts burning within us? We can just see signs of his grace, ways in which he's carried us, just little examples of his love being poured out upon us, even in times of struggle. Well, as these friends are making their way to Emmaus, they're talking about all the events of the past days, and there was so much that was bewildering them. They utter those sad words. We had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. We had hoped. That is the utterance of those in need of respair. They knew that Jesus had died and with him all their hopes about who Jesus was and what he would do. But now there was, no, there was this report of the empty tomb and of angels and, and even the suggestion that Jesus was no longer dead. We had hoped. I guess we've all spoken those words at times. But the resurrection means that there is respair. As a prayer in the funeral service says, your mighty power brings joy out of grief and life out of death. Jesus is uniquely able to turn things around and he demonstrated that ability conclusively in the resurrection. He is the God who is able to redeem anything. So bring your disappointment to the cross. Bring your we had hoped to the cross and see what Jesus will do with it. For the Christian, there is always hope that death itself cannot even conquer. I love the way that Jesus just goes along with them, listening to them, giving them the space to process. But as they conclude, Jesus picks up. Now, there was no concept in the Jewish understanding of the Messiah that he would die. So it was way outside of their frame of reference, all that they had witnessed in Jerusalem, all that they had seen happen to their friend. Even though it was there in the Old Testament, they didn't interpret the scriptures in that way. But then Jesus begins to unpack the word. And as he did, there was revelation. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? I think that must have been the most extraordinary Bible study. And that the seven miles from Jerusalem to Emmaus must have felt really quite short as they were absorbed by the wonderful teaching of their companion. I wonder what it will be like when we get to the end of our lives and we stand before Jesus and we review our lives together with him, how he will show us how his purposes were being outworked in our lives, even at times where we struggled to see where he was. The friends invite Jesus to join, him, join them for a meal. 
And it's when he took bread, gave thanks and broke it that they recognised him. Maybe there was something unique in, uh, in the way that he performed that simple task that reminded them. Or maybe it was supernaturally revealed to them. But suddenly they realised that the risen Jesus had been there in their midst all along. And in that moment, they respared. There we had hoped was trumped by Jesus is alive. Yes, I would have loved to have been on that walk to Emmaus with Jesus. But do you know, what we have as New Testament believers post-Pentecost is even more extraordinary. They walked a journey of seven miles. We can essentially walk our whole life on the road with Jesus. Because when he returned to the Father, he sent the Holy Spirit to inhabit us. So that wherever we go, we can know him accompanying us on our journey. We can walk with him every day. We can know our hearts burning within us as that Holy Spirit, the one who leads us into all truth, brings revelation of the Father, brings revelation of his word. We can be burning with his presence. We can know the way that he enlightens us to, to see more of who he is. And we can open the door to him and invite him to stay with us and eat with us and know that he will never leave us. Amen.
Thank you so much, brothers and sisters, for having joined us in this service. It was a fantastic service. The presence of God was with us and still with us. Now that the service has ended, the presence of God still continues to work in your life. And I pray that whatever the message the message was, as you received the message, that you get healed to it. Believe it and run with it. Make use of that word. Let it go deep in your heart, that you continue to be gospels of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Well, it's always a pleasure, brothers and sisters, all the time when we meet together every Sunday. Now, can I say to you that uh, here at St. Mary's and Ham Preston Church, we are now having in-person services. Uh, and so if you want to come and if you live around this area you know, or coming down south, uh, please uh, make an appointment, ring the church office, or book online because we're kind of limited as a meeting. But we'll still continue with online services. May the Lord bless you and bless your children. May he bless the work of your hands. And may he bless what you'll be doing this week. Be a blessing and a gift to someone. Be intentional of telling others about Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you and keep you. And see you next week at the same time. Shalom, shalom.